To say the Switch Pro and the Switch Mini is a popular topic lately, I think it would be an understatement. I mean, this is just a quick Switch Pro look uh, filtered by the past week. Uh, you're seeing, you know, Review Tech USA here, Switch Force, Spawn Wave, Obi Wan, Super Metal Dave, Game Explain, um, whoever this person is, Sun's Bookish Games X, um, What About Nintendo, another Spawn Wave, another Obi Wan, HMK chiming in, <laughs> Nintendo Enthusiast, Lord Respawn, Nintendo Wire, Rurikin, Smash JT, RGT85, Play to Dead, Dreamcast Guy. Uh, Player Essence, Obi Wan again, Arex Games, Super Metal Dave again, Switch Force, <laughs> like it just goes on and on and on and on. And this is just page one. I mean, there was beat 'em ups. I mean, it's just infinitely loading. It, it it does not stop. Everyone is talking about the Switch Pro and the Switch Mini, and that technically includes myself. Uh, when you go to my channel. You'll see, I have also talked about the Switch Pro and the Switch Mini too, but I haven't really made a dedicated video talking specifically about um, what I think is going to happen with the Switch Pro and a potential reality that exists based on a rumor that is ancient when it comes to Switch rumors. Because uh, you see, the last time I really talked about the Switch Mini and Switch Pro in any form was during a live stream. And that whole live stream wasn't really even dedicated to it. And uh, not a lot of people saw that live stream with only 800, 900 or so people there. Outside of that, there was basically uh, my Prime News episode and then the original news report. I have not really actually talked about it. So we're going to talk about it right now. Because this Nintendo Switch right here, this Switch is uh, likely, or maybe even, I, maybe I should say likely, but possibly rushed. Rushed intentionally so, because the Switch Pro is going to be what the actual Switch was supposed to be. Wait a second, what the hell am I talking about? Well, let's get into it. <laughs> So you guys know this, this is the Nintendo Switch, and it is an amazing platform that launched on March 3rd of 2017. But what if I told you that this, this beautiful, amazing product that I've gotten two plus years of enjoyment out of is not actually what the Nintendo Switch was supposed to be? What if I told you a rumor existed out on the interwebs that talked about how this is actually the backup plan? Now. To understand this, you have to go back to the days of the NX, and the days of the Wii U, to be fair. The Wii U was a colossal failure for Nintendo. It did not sell well. While some of the games sold well, the system didn't sell well, and it ruined some of the potential sales of those games. So Nintendo knew early on they were going to have to cut the Wii U life cycle short. And if you know, it usually takes about five years for a life cycle for Nintendo systems to run their course before a new platform is ready. This came out a little bit after four years of the Wii U being on the market, and the Wii U actually stopped production in October of 2016. So Nintendo knew that this platform was coming. And the thing is, there's a lot of issues with this platform. Do you guys know about the issues? We don't talk about them a lot, but uh, the Joy-Cons. Um, hello, some people have a loose Joy-Con problem. I fix mine manually, but a lot of people have the loose Joy-Con problem. A lot of people have the issue with, with the Joy-Cons popping right off. There's Joy-Con drift. Oh, man, do we even get into the Joy-Con drift? How about the Pro Controller and the D-Pad problem? Heck, what about the kickstand? The kickstand is so flimsy that, that I actually lost mine. That's how flimsy it is, in addition to the system knocking over. And this is a replacement backplate because my backplate cracked even though at the time that it cracked it had not even left my switch dock uh there's the warping issue there's been heat issues uh i mean heck my switch might potentially be warped right now uh i th there's just a lot of issues with this in addition to this the ui itself is really simple i mean you guys all know and love this ui but it there, there's not much there. there's no themes there's no music the eShop feels like it was kind of tossed together and everything about the system felt rushed even the nintendo switch online service which came out almost two years after they announced when this platform was going to launch still feels kind of hodgepodge together doesn't it and I think the reasoning behind all of this is the Nintendo Switch, when they were internally developing it, was never intended to release that early. It was always supposed to release last holiday, conveniently around the time the Nintendo Switch online service was actually ready to launch. And while it still would have been a bare bones online service in all likelihood, 
The reality is it could have started off that way from day one and just got, continued to get better and better and better instead of giving us free online for two years and then just taking that all away, which is a very bad look on Nintendo's part. Now, they were open and honest about it. Online's a different topic. The point is that everything about this system does not really feel like the standard Nintendo system. The quality, the dock scratching it, like it feels premium, but it also feels like a lot of other electronic devices that aren't like Nintendo. Nintendo devices are known for durability, they're known for sustainability, they're known for lasting. How many of you guys still have NESs out there with NES controllers and working NES cards even though the batteries were supposed to die like 15 years ago? Nintendo is known to over-engineer their platforms to last for eons, but not this. This feels like I'll be lucky if I get another couple years out of it. Now, my whole theory behind this, and this is supported by an old unsubstantiated rumor and the dreads of the internet on 4chan, is that the Switch Pro is actually what the Nintendo Switch was supposed to be. That they rushed this platform to the market because they needed something out there to placate their investors and also to really get momentum going back in Nintendo's way. They knew when this platform launched that Furukawa was going to be taking over for Kimishima. Even though it wasn't announced publicly yet, they knew that that was going to happen. Just like they probably also knew that Doug Bowser was going to be overtaking for Reggie fils -Aimé. And they didn't want to give those two key figureheads at Nintendo a start that didn't have any momentum behind it. And hence, they needed to get a platform out the door that wasn't sinking. 3DS sales were starting to massively dip. The Wii U sales never really got off the ground running. They needed something to reinvigorate belief that Nintendo knows what they're doing and to do that they got something out the door that is rushed and that is this Nintendo Switch. Now the theory behind this is that the Nintendo Switch uses the Tegra X1 and if you know anything about especially the launch units they were using stock Tegra X1s. Tegra X1s were made for a completely different product not even intended for this type of use not for docked and, and handheld they were made for the Nvidia Shield which was supposed to be a giant tablet that's like this big like it's huge as, with a bigger battery and it was supposed to be a video game tablet and that kind of failed. And then they made the NVIDIA Shield TV, which has found a bit of a market in uh, in places like China and, and out east. But in reality, it never really took off. So they had potentially millions of these stock Tegra X1s sitting on a shelf. So when NVIDIA and Nintendo started talking about a partnership and having to get this system out super quick, it likely started with the fact that NVIDIA just had millions of these processors sitting in storage, not able to sell it. So they got a killer deal to get this platform out quickly. But that doesn't mean that that's what the plan was originally. Now, the Tegra X1 SoC is made on a 20 nanometer process. Almost nothing today is made on a 20 nanometer process. So it was never really a long-term solution, right? And NVIDIA knew this because they are at the forefront of technology. So this was always a Band-Aid. The Switch Pro was likely a custom SoC, a custom chip, not Tegra, that was built specifically for the purposes of the Nintendo Switch and what Nintendo wanted to do with it. Unfortunately, to make a chip like that, it takes years of research, years of testing to get it right. And Nintendo didn't have that kind of time to wait when the Wii U and the 3DS were really sinking. So they got this out the door with essentially off-the-shelf parts. And... Now we're kind of left with a system that's flawed, a system that's got a lot of issues, but a system that might be quickly being replaced by not only a, a smaller version of it that's more durable for children, but also a pro-grade version that basically fixes all of the issues Switch has today. And a lot of those issues start first off with the Tegra X1 chip. It's a beautiful chip. It's amazing. A few years ago it's dated now it's being made on a on a nanometer process that basically none of the chip makers even use anymore so it's going to become more expensive to continue to make more of them it was cheap at launch because they had a bunch in the warehouse but they've sold over 30 million of these let me tell you they don't have any more sitting in a warehouse they have to manufacture new ones and that's expensive so what is happening and what likely has been happening this whole time is the real nintendo switch yes the actual one Nintendo planned to launch originally is going to be coming out this year. And that Switch is going to be massively redesigned compared to this one. And that's one of the rumors from Eurogamer even mentions that it's a pretty big redesign. And I think it's because it's the 
actual original design of Switch before they needed to rush something to market. And that design will be using a custom system on a chip. So it's gonna have a brand new chip that'll have backwards compatibility with the Tegra X1 chip. So there might be some architecture similarities there, but it's going to be a custom chip built specifically for Switch. At least that's my theory. And the Joy-Cons are gonna be fixed. They're gonna be a little bit more ergonomic. There might even be one that comes with a D-pad because that's a common point. Like, why isn't there a D-pad or an option for a D-pad? It'll still be compatible with everything else that's coming out on the market, I'm sure. It might have a redesigned dock. There might be a screen with no bezels because, um, who thought that was a good idea to put a bezeled screen? I know some people want a glass front top. I'm neither here nor there on a glass front top. I think the plastic top was for children. Uh, but as a pro model, I guess I would prefer um, a glass top and then you know use a plastic top for the, the mini version. That's just a personal preference, though. Um, fixing how the locking mechanism works on this, fixing the kickstand area, adding an Ethernet port to a new design dock. Like, why is there not an Ethernet port? And why is the USB 3.0 port on the Nintendo Switch dock not run at 3.0 speeds. It has the capability. People have torn it apart and proven it can run at those speeds. But Nintendo has not released a firmware update for the dock because there's apparently no way to update the dock to make it read at that speed. So again, there's a lot of things here that feel like a lot of great ideas rushed. And uh, the Switch has been massively successful in spite of it, largely because there's an amazing library of games and this concept even at this stage, is so well put together that most people overlook the fact that this is an extremely flawed system compared to what we're used to from Nintendo. So the theory then, and my reality that I think is going to exist, is when the Switch Pro comes, we're going to be very shocked at how many changes and how many things are quote-unquote fixed from this and how i don't know how powerful that new chip's going to be in comparison to the, what's in here but it will be a brand new soc because uh yeah they're not gonna be making 20 nanometer anymore it could be a 12 nanometer process a 16 nanometer which is a little more uncommon 12 nanometer and 14 seem to be the more common ones some some companies are even doing like seven nanometers i think amd does that but uh they're not with amd so i expect more of a 12 or a 14 nanometer process which shrinks the die which enables them to put more transistors which technically enables it to be more power efficient and a more powerful chip so it should be something more powerful but reality is that i don't think this nintendo switch is what the Nintendo Switch was intended to be. I think this Nintendo Switch is what Nintendo and NVIDIA could throw together rather quickly to have something out sooner to the market because of sinking sales in the midst of major management shifts. And they wanted those management shifts to have momentum. They wanted Nintendo to have momentum. And they knew if the Switch could just take off, they could always release the Pro version later and do that mid-gen upgrade that everyone else has been doing, including Nintendo, for decades. So I want to thank all you guys for tuning in. I want your guys' thoughts on my theory behind this Switch kind of being a rushed version of the system and the pro version potentially being what the switch was always meant to be again speculation on an old rumor that has zero verification on anything i couldn't even find it that's how old it is i think the thread on 4chan has been deleted uh but it is what it is i want to thank you guys for tuning in i also want to remind you to enter our nintendo switch super smash bros ultimate giveaway bundle through the gleam high link down in the description uh that's a 50,000 subscriber giveaway so when we finally hit 50,000 subscribers or if we do i guess i uh, will announce the winner of that i want to thank you guys for tuning in and uh hey i'll catch you guys in the next video